Hey, how's it going? This is Brian with Radical Prep. We're doing the January 2015 um, integrated algebra test and we're on section three, number 34. This one says a DVD costs twice as much as a music CD. Jack buys two DVDs and two CDs and spends $45. Determine how much one CD costs in dollars. Okay, and they say they only want algebraic solutions, so we gotta show all the work. That's basically what that means. So let's start off, let's label our variables. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, write down DVD equals, and I'm going to write CD equals. Now, which one do you start with, do you know? Well, I'm going to start with CD, and I'm going to call it X, because it said a DVD costs twice as much. So that, that way I can make DVD 2X, and that makes sense. So now, let's write our equation. Jack buys two DVDs, so the quantity 2 at a price of 2X plus two CDs at a price of X and all added up we're gonna spend 45 bucks so let's just simplify 2 times 2 4x plus 2x equals 45 okay we've got 6x equals 45 divide by 6 divide by 6 and what do you know we get 45 divided by 6 got my calculator here no problem 7.5 so we can write so that's X, right? And then one CD. Okay. So we can write one CD costs seven dollars and fifty cents. All right. We're all done, and that's it. Easy as that. All right. This next one says Noj has the following test scores. He's got a seventy-six, an eighty-four, a sixty-nine, a seventy-four, and a ninety-one. His teacher will allow him to retake the test on which he scored the lowest, so that's the 69. Noj wants an average of at least 82. Determine the least number of additional points he must score on the retest. So to solve this one, I want to start you guys off with just writing what is the formula for an average? How do you find an average? Well, an average equals, I'm going to write the sum of the parts, so we'll just keep it, you add them all up, and what do you divide by? The number of parts. Or the number of things right we'll put parts things it doesn't really matter so in this example he wants the average to be 82 so I'm just gonna write it in so 82 equals I don't know what the sum is right I don't know exactly what he's gonna score yet so I'll just write sum, and I can do that I'll just write sum in but the number of parts we, we already know we have five test grades right so let's put a five in there so to solve this I'm gonna put that over one Cross multiply 82 times oops, times 5 is 410 so the sum has to equal 410 so that means after he does his retest all his scores have to add up to 410 so now what does that mean how do we use that information to help us well over here let's look at the original scores it was a uh, 76 plus an 84 plus a 69, plus a 74, plus a 91. So the original sum, original sum equals what? And we'll just do that real quick. 84 plus 69, plus 74, plus 91. So we get 394. So what does that mean? Well, to get an 82 average, he needs to score a 410. He needs to add up to a 410. Right now he adds up to a 394. So when he retakes that 69, or that test that he got that 69 on, he's got to score an additional. And to figure that out, I'm just going to subtract 410 minus 394, which gives us 16. So basically when he retakes that test, he's got to score, needs to score to score, ooh, to score an additional, and wow, I'm really spelling off, additional 16 points. And that's it. And I hope you understood that. Basically, we're just using the average formula here to help us out. We know he wants an 82. He's taking five tests. We find the sum, and we take that new sum and subtract it from the old one to find out how, much, how many more points does he actually need to get. And that's it. All right, and so finally, let's go to the last problem here. And the last one is a graphing problem. And this one says they want you to graph 
uh, y is less than x and x is greater than 5 on the axis below and then I'll just scroll down they want you to find a coordinate that's in the solution set so when you do these I'll just scroll back up the first thing that I like to do is um, I like to just say instead of y is less than x just say y equals x and the first thing I'll do is graph that and the other one is x equals 5 and we'll talk about how we, we deal with the, the less than or equal, less than or greater than. So y equals x, I hope you know, is just a line that goes up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. So hopefully I'm drawing this well. And I'll do the same thing in the other direction, right? Left one down one, left one down one, going the other way. Okay, the other line was x equals 5. So let's find that. 1, 2, 3, Four, five. You just got to know when it's x equals, it's always doing this. It's always going up and down. So x equals 5, and bear with me as I try and draw this as straight as possible. It's a lot tougher than it looks with the electronic pen. I got one of those tablets that I have to write on a, a little board. So that's going up. That's going down. All right, not too shabby. I'll label them so no one can take any points away from me just in case they're feeling fresh. y equals x. So now we got to figure out where's our solution set. Well, this says y is less than x. Okay, so we're looking for everything under the curve down. Y is less than x. So our solution set here is going to be everything under y equals x because it's less than. This says x is greater than five. So if you're looking at me, it's everything to the right of this, right? So everything going this way. Now where is the intersection of these two? Well, a good intersection could be this point right here. That's right in the middle, right? So that point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 3. And that's all you're going to do. Solution. 8, 8, 3. And you're done. That's it. All right, so uh, good luck on your tests. Keep watching my videos. I can definitely help you out. And uh, keep studying. Take care, guys.